uh, Master Lewis Welcome NL OPS Engineer Ning. Presentation. Presentation. Uh, eh? I convinced my old school, our old high school, to offer a Python programming class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice one. It's okay. You did great. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to try to talk slowly because um, this is an English talk. And uh, this is basically just a storytelling on what happened because for those of you who don't know, it's very difficult for anyone in the Philippines to implement a new curriculum or a new class, right? So as a title, um, a little bit about myself. I play Dota 2. Oh, what, why is it Dot 2? Anyway, Dota 2. Um, a software engineer, data science, machine learning. You can talk to me about those stuff. Um, and I, I love grass. See, I, you know, if ever I see grass, I jump. <laughs> um, and um, I like custard buns. So that's it. Um, what we're gonna be talking about today are just this quick things. So we're gonna give you a brief preview of the Philippine education system, and then what are the gaps with regards to tech and education. Funny thing is, all those Python stuff happened because of HTML. <laughs> and then, what happened that actually started a Python programming class? What are the stuff that we learned and what's next? Okay, so, Philippine education system. Right now, we're implementing a K-12 system. So, from kinder and then six years of primary junior high four years and senior high two years. I think it was implemented a couple of years back. And um, based on the news, I think they're going to change this again. I don't know. It's quite messy. Uh, logistically, it's very difficult and challenging in the Philippines because, as you might know, hopefully, the Philippines is an archipelago. So there are so many islands. It's very difficult for logistics. And the education system was severely affected during the pandemic. Right. So. Anyway, I also like Rick and Morty, for those of you who watch the show. So what's the gap between tech and education, right? So hopefully you get the reference if you watch the show. So when I was in high school, 2006, it was quite long. Uh, out of the 15 sections, only three has computer classes. And only one, cla uh, only one section, which is our, uh, our class, only has... Uh, programming related class, which is, I think it's PHP uh, and JavaScript, I think. Yeah. So for those of you who know Friendster, we do a lot of JavaScript stuff and CSS in Friendster. Anyway, yeah, I'm old. <sighs> so aside from that, uh, we are sharing computer with other people. Like for one computer, it's two to three person, which is, it's not good for learning, right? And I think over the years, it improved. So this is just recently uh, one of the classes that I thought um, we have a good PC lab, we have enough devices. However, bless you. Um, most schools does not have teachers and skilled professionals to teach them or to implement those classes. And I think that is the biggest disconnect between technology and education in the Philippines. We lack the skills. Now, logistic issues, yeah, we don't have the good machines and stuff. We still have resource problems. The internet sucks really bad. Like if you're in the province, you need to climb the highest mountain just to get a cell reception in some cases. Um, the maintenance of the computer lab is also expensive. The knowledge gap, again, as I've mentioned, most educators don't have an incentive to learn. Because it's, let's just accept it, right? Technology or programming in general, there's a high uh, barrier of entry for people to learn it. It's the resources are everywhere, but it's very, you know, you need you need to have a good um, class or you need to attend uh, online classes rigorously to be able to learn, right? And yeah, that's just a thing. Now, it actually started because of HTML. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, anyway, let's give you a bit of context first. So. Um, 
I'm from the Philippines. There's a small town in red. Uh, it's the city of Tayabas. That's where I was born. And Luis Palad Integrated uh, High School is uh, where I studied. Okay. So I think it was way back in 2013 when the school asked me, hey, uh, can you teach us web development? Because we want to do HTML. I'm like, hmm, fine. HTML. So that's what I did. Um, we have uh, like small classes going on. I think 2013 to 2016, there were some um, seminars, there were some workshops for web development. However, it did not go through as an official class for the school, right? Uh, the goal was to create a website for the school, but when we created the website, they don't have money to host the website and they want. <laughs> And they asked me, can you shoulder the hosting and stuff like that? I'm like, no. <laughs> You're a government office. You should be able to afford it. But they can't. That, that's the problem. Now, um, I thought that's it. I thought I was like, okay, I'm done with the school. I did my thing to help them. And, you know, we're parting ways. However, little did I know that things are going to get more exciting from here on. Right? So what's the actual motivation for the Python class? It was this. So the students, they have the research classes, right? And um, as the output of the research class, you need to do an investigatory or research project. Basically, it's this group right here. So this is the first group that actually came to me and asked me, hey, we want to implement an automated drone that can monitor the school premises. How do we do it? And they have the I think they bought it secondhand from some sketchy dealers on <laughs> online selling sites. And uh, yeah, they, they don't know. Basically, no one in the school knows how to do it. Unfortunately for me, or fortunately for them, <laughs> I was still in the Philippines that time. And um, yeah, we did some sort of stuff like this. Uh, so as you can see here, we, these are the codes that they started. They, they have literally zero background in programming. That's why the drone crashed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, they were trying the codes and I'm like, uh, yeah, it's the, the drone crashed because there was an error in their code. But it, it was fun. It was fun. Right? And I think that is, where, that is where the whole investigatory project ignited all of this stuff. From 2017 to 2019, like, the, the school wanted to participate in competitions, national level competitions, regional level competitions. But the problem is that most of the top schools in the Philippines, they already have this class. They cannot compete because uh, our, our, my old high school doesn't offer a programming class. We don't have a good enough output for the research or for the investigatory project. So throughout 2017, 2019, we did some experimentation. I think this is, we had some projects relating to Arduino. I teach the students how to, like the actuators, the motors, and the sensors, how to use them, how to integrate them in the code. There were also projects that are web development based. So there are some web development portals that they made and some web applications that are based on Python. This is specifically fast API, if I'm not mistaken. If memory serves me right. So yeah. Throughout those years, actually, we had some test classes already. We tried to implement courses for Arduino for students. Um, I had to give the school my personal Arduino. <laughs> Uh, hardware devices so that they can start that class. Uh, approximately in those years, we were able to produce 10 investigatory projects that somehow uses coding and programming, all of which are in Python. Uh, we have Arduino-based systems, some web portals, web application. Uh, we even have some machine learning uh, going on there, like some image processing, garbage classification, uh, leaf classification, disease on leaf classification, you know. But that's it. I think that is where the moment that the school realized that there is really a need for programming, right? And they're basically getting it for free. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not asking them for any payment because it's actually one of my motivation to just do this volunteer work and stuff like that. However, it just doesn't scale. I'm tired. <laughs> 
So there are times that um, I'm like, oh my God, there's another group of students that need to consult with me. You know, it's okay, one or two group of students, fine. But then there are like five group of students, seven group of students, ten group of students. I'm like, come on, um, something's wrong here. I need to do something, right? I need to scale myself. <laughs> but I can't. I can't scale myself. And COVID happened, 2020. I posted this because everyone's in lockdown. I was like, uh, maybe I can teach some programming class or Python class online. So I set this up together with some of the teachers. Uh, I got a lot of response and there were about 25, 27 people who joined, four of which are the teachers from my old high school that are gonna teach Python programming class. So we use this opportunity to be able to design a course that is self-paced because all of them basically have zero knowledge in programming, which is good. We can make this as a good learning experience for us to be able to make a self-paced course. Uh, we tested it with the teachers and I invited some of the previous students to also assess if the course is easy enough for them, right? So I just wanna thank this four very supportive teachers right here. I think. Uh, it just so happens that my energy and their energy and their passion match it towards building this course. So we were able to just dig in and make it possible. So these are the guys that are actually teaching programming and they are spearheading the initiative of the school to go full tech, you know, digital attend conferences and everything. So after that class, the school year, we were able to implement uh, our Python programming class. Right. So this is some sort of like the rough idea that we had back then. Uh, we're going to start with grade 7, grade 8, and grade 9. So for the school year 2020, 2021, we're just going to teach grade 8 and grade 7, like basic programming, like first part. And then that's basically it. In the next consecutive years, grade 7, programming 1, programming 2, and then we're going to in the Arduino class um, later. Then all the materials should be self-paced. Because right, it's the pandemic, everyone's at home. Um, there's a research class for those who are taking um, programming classes as well. So the research class is where they actually produce their research, their investigatory projects. And this is how we laid out the output. So in conjunction with the research class, sometimes for grade 8 and grade 9 and grade 10, we require or encourage them to produce programming or uh, a research that uses Python. Uh, for their output, right? And this is just basically the scope for programming one. It's just basic programming concepts, variables, control flows, and for programming to the data structures and functions. So it's very basic, but at least it's something, right? And then for Arduino, the robotic components and the sensors. Right? So those are the expected output of each of the uh, subjects that we implemented. So what did we learn? What happened? What, what was the whole experience like for us, right? Um, basically, here are some of the observations that we have. For some reason, the students are struggling with control flows. <laughs> well, I think it's quite, you know, if you're starting from scratch and you have so many other workloads, it's quite difficult, which is totally understandable. And I think we might need to add or we might need to subdivide the class even further maybe add another programming class um, just to make the focus of each class better. Uh, we added capstone projects and it's actually a good way for them to retain what they learn. We were surprised by some of the projects that were produced. I'm gonna show some of it to you later. And then there are always those rock star developers, you know, <laughs> that they will always excel no matter what and they're, they're, they, they pretty much get bored. So one of them, uh, when there's a class, when ChatGPT came out, and then one guy just basically <laughs> uses the ChatGPT API and everything. I'm like, really, you did this? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, there's always that guy, right? There's always that guy uh, that will do something extraordinary. So we need to take this into account, right? We did some pilot special classes, which I'm gonna show you later. So as of the moment, since 2020, there are around eight successful programming classes that's been going on, which is quite a lot given that it's just, what, two, three years ago? And this just all started because I'm just too tired. 
So, um, previous students actually also have taken computer science as their course in college. So they, they were like saying that, ah, I like computer science now. And then when, basically when they started college, oh, I don't like computer science now, it's too difficult. So uh, as of 2023, like this school year alone, we were able to produce, so uh, what, how many? Nine? Nine programming-related uh, research projects, which is quite nice, I think. That's awesome. Um, from zero, like several years back, right? Uh, we also have this. So I think they also started joining and winning competitions, which is nice. Um, last year, we uh, held the first Python marathon competition in the, the school itself. So that's the thing. We are planning to expand on that idea going forward. Um, we have the Capstone project. So we're quite, uh, we're quite surprised because they, they used Pygame. I mean, no one, no one taught them how to use Pygame. And then they just basically just, poof, there's a game <laughs> made of, you know, we're like, what? <laughs> you guys can learn really fast? Okay. Uh, there are several adjustments on our side as well. Again, for advanced learners, we are testing some pilot class uh, which I'm going to show you. One of the goal is to just have this really top performing students and train them, give them all the knowledge that they need. Hopefully, they can win competitions and just, you know, invest on their interest in programming. Uh, we're going to take into account a new class curriculum because uh, apparently we need to adjust it, right? Uh, we also forge connections with the local government so that if there's a certain problem in the, go like, for example, in agriculture, they can use that problem statement and use it in their research, right? So the problem with investigatory projects is that students can't figure out a good problem to do. But if you already have the problem from the local government, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Uh, here, this is just taken last June, the, 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 the classroom. So basically, those are some of the rock star guys. Um, I'm the guy in the front, and basically, we're just digging more into sorting and all those advanced stuff. Um, this one, this is from the agriculture office. I was able to connect um, the school to the rice agriculture of uh, rice research uh, agriculture something something in, in our province. And some of the researches that were produced were related to controlling pest, rice related research and etc. So that's actually I think one of the best part is to be able to solve real problems existing and to be able to apply programming you know, with just high school, high school students, which is kind of awesome. I wish I was I had stuff like that when I was in high school. So though, though there's still some challenges, right? Uh, we have no resource basically at all. Um, oftentimes, the teachers, myself, we do out-of-pocket stuff. Um, it's quite difficult, especially for the teachers, because the salary of teachers in the Philippines are just really low. Trust me, my mother's a teacher, so I know. And then the entry point for tech is still high for educators. Um, that's why I was able to push with a lot of stuff is that because the school is getting free stuff for me, right? <laughs> so it's free. So they have no objection uh, with regards to the class, and I am more than willing to help them. However, typically, you, you cannot see this kind of stuff li laying around free in the internet <laughs> or free somewhere. Some, someone's going to charge you if you want to implement or develop a full course, right? But yeah, um, the lack of awareness of what programming can enable, I think this is the biggest issue right here. Because when we all learn how to code, it's like you have the power to create. I don't know about you, but I feel that way. <laughs> so um, I think they still don't understand the potential of learning programming yet. And this is one of my biggest advocacy so that I can let them understand the possibilities of doing lots of problem solving research just by learning coding, right? Uh, and then I, we, we need to scale, right? So <laughs> if we want to implement more of these courses, we need to teach. We need to give the knowledge that we have to others, right? So what's next? We're moving really fast. Actually, in my opinion, it was quite fast, um, but it's good, it's good. At least we're moving. So here's my original goal, and this is a selfish goal because I just want, I just want to be free of any responsibilities during those time. It was really tiring at my, uh, 
with my side, with my side. So that's the original goal. Just transfer the knowledge to teachers and educators so that I'm free. <laughs> However, it changed. So you see, my original goal, V2 final. Yeah. My goal currently is to make sure that all of the schools in our city will implement a programming class. That's it. I'm just going to push towards everyone implementing a programming class. The motivation is simple. If there's a demand, we need to supply that demand. And the demand is schools who actually perform a lot in research, who join competition, who wins competition, who has this all prestigious stuff, gets more funding. <laughs> and that's the motivation, right? So if the schools perform really well, they get a lot of attention, they can get lots of projects and stuff like that. So we're banking on that idea. And then some of the details is that there are currently five high schools in our city, one of which already has a programming class. The other four remaining doesn't. Fortunately, in one of the schools, I think my mother is the principal, so let's make that three. Um, but the idea is we want to share the curriculum from Luis Palad Integrated High School to those other schools. So basically, I'm teaching them how to open source. <laughs> um, open source your courses, make it as a template for these schools so that they can follow, provide them with all the learnings. That's my condition. If you want my help, you need to help others as well. That's it. Because you're getting my help for free. So what I'm asking is just Teach others as well. Make the information free. Make learning free. That's it. And I'm going to do everything in my power to help you guys. Right? So, again, we want the support from the local government, but they, they don't know about these kinds of things. It's like, what, what is programming? What is, what is coding? What do you do? What's that? Is that like the typewriter thingy? I don't know if you tried the typewriter, the old ones. But yeah, we want to raise awareness. We want to show presence. We want to put in their face, hey, look, this is where we are going. This is how we are achieving it. Can you please give us funds? Because we don't have money anymore. <laughs> That's the thing. Now, in the more long-term goal, I think we want to have a citywide programming competition where you know, everyone from every school participates. We already started doing that last year just in the, the, the one school. And um, we want to promote the relationship between government offices and the school so that if the government offices have a problem, the schools can come in, do the research with the students, right? And we want to encourage more students to pursue STEM-related courses in college. And hopefully, hopefully, in the near future, it won't be me standing here it would be some of our students or some of our educators showing you guys how they used Python in their courses, in their projects, in their research. And I think that's it. So do you have questions? Uh, Doge died, by the way. So RIP Doge. Anyway. Uh, I'm good. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, next is QA time. Everyone can go to Slido on PyCon Taiwan official website to write down your question and they will be sure on the projection screen. Okay, okay. Um, have you faced challenges from the students' family, similar parts of the society? Computer equals game equals bad. And how do you deal with this kind of negativity? First, do you know Dota 2? Like, there's lots of money in computer games. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, um, that's the thing, right? When I was young, I actually skipped classes to play Ragnarok, Counter-Strike, those stuff. I'm not sure if you know those games. And my, my parents always told me, it's because you play computers. That's why you're, you know, it's, it's because of computers your grades are falling down. After several years, I'm like, hey, mom, is it still because of computers that I'm able to travel the world, right? 
So, thanks to computers, I'm able to do this all the stuff, right? It's almost the same logic. I think, I think in the Philippines, in general, more families have started become, to become more supportive. And the thing is, they can actually see the output. Uh, I think I've shown you an example where they created a game. So the output of the programming class, the Cupstone project, is a game, right? I think they, we showed it to the parents and some of the school teachers were very, very proud that even the parents appreciate that their kids can create a game. So that's the thing. One of, it's just how you frame it, right? If, if you approach it in such a way that gaming is bad, then definitely it's going to be a problem. But if we try to integrate gaming, for example, in the projects, we try to show them, hey, look, your son, your daughter, they did this. What can you say about that? And they were actually really proud, right? There were some hesitation, definitely, especially on the side of the, especially on the side of the school, uh, with regards to if the students can actually apply this, right? However, I think I was also lucky because I'm a computer science graduate, graduate from master's degree and stuff like that, and I have the credentials to back myself up. And most of the higher ups in the school basically don't know what I'm talking about, so they're just okay, that's good. <laughs> but yeah, it's just how you frame it, right? If you put it in a negative way, then it's it's not gonna be good. But if you try to integrate those negative opinions, then yeah, that's it. I think that's one of the things that we experience. Um, you must be exhausted at some point. How do you get over it? I don't get over it. I'm still exhausted. <laughs> So, whoever asked this question, um, no, I, I, I'm still exhausted. So, but one thing that helped me get by is that if it becomes an advocacy for you, because uh, I saw some of my previous students who were actually saying, you, you know the joy when you solve a problem? When you solve a bug and you see them have that joy? It's like, oh shit, that's, that's me. <laughs> I can see myself in them. So I'm still exhausted. I don't get over it, but we just have to move on, right? Anyway, how do you convince teachers to have more programming class? Can programming skill? Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that teachers became convinced is that, as I've mentioned, if a teacher is coaching a research group and the research group won some awards or won the competition, the teachers also get credit. Yeah, that's how that's just how they work it's it's effed up i know but that's just how they work in the philippines so there's an incentive for them because winning national competitions with the student as a coach raises their salary at some point hopefully i think yeah but on a more personal notice i think it just so happens that the set of teachers that i'm working with matches my energy and my passion towards this right they're all exhausted as well all of them, all of us, but you know, you just got to do it for the next generation, right? Uh, and yes, programming skills has a lot of application in the Philippine college, if, especially if you want to pursue STEM, biology, physics, math, and stuff like that. So it's also the buzzword, so yeah, it helps. With all the challenges you experience, if you go X years back, would you do it again? Would you still advocate Python? If yes, what would you do differently? I would still advocate Python. No, I would not do anything differently because I don't look back on past things, right? Um, I think, I think if I go back several years ago, I would have started it much earlier, right? So that all of this, will be in a much better place, right? Is it okay? Oh, can I answer one more question or? One more question? Okay, sorry, uh, last one. Ah, are there impacts on the education scene by ChatGPT or some AI things? Yes, there's a lot of impact in ChatGPT. In fact, one of my colleagues in uh, my master's degree in Ateneo in the Philippines wrote a specific paper about the challenges of ChatGPT in the context of college education. However, as I've mentioned, since high school, elementary, and like basic education has a lot of disconnect with the tech, they don't know about ChatGPT. I mean, 
I know that some of their students uses ChatGPT. I can see it in the way that they phrase some of the assignments and homework, but the teachers, they don't know. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that we need to address, right? Um, I think it's time. I'll probably try to answer, like the other two, you can approach me or I'll try to answer them later. So thank you very much for listening, guys. And yeah, if you want to ask questions later, I'll be there somewhere. And thank you, PyCon Taiwan. It's always nice to be back and have good tea. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Nis, for sharing. If there are still levels who want to communicate when the speaker can go to the communication area. Thank you.